Oh, does it work? Are we good? Sign up for the newsletter. I don't want to, well, I guess, I don't know. Y'all know my email. Should I sign up for the newsletter? <laughs> Let's vote. Do y'all want me to, what should we do? Oh, we have also got some spooky good music here. Let's sign up. Yeah, you know what? Let's sign up for that. Yeah, let's do it. You're very right. How could I have considered? Well, there you go. You all know my email that takes no time <laughs> to figure out. Hey, Gavin. There we go. All right, well, if y'all are interested, I mean, we've already started, so let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Let us begin the demo. And I will reactivate this Kit Fox logo. Or maybe I don't want it on. We'll see if it'll get in the way, but I want to have... I love the Kit Fox icon. I think it's so cute. You know, sign up. How we stay updated? You're right. How will any of us stay updated? Anyways, uh, let's see. A hundred years without murder. Ooh. A hundred years without demonic possession. Or daemonic, if you like. Then this. I am Sister Ada, exorcist and investigator. This is my testament to the massacre at St. Walpurga's... Walpurgis? Walpurgia? I'm not sure. Walpurgis Abbey. It is truth. Do not believe the lies of my accusers. Oh, dang. All right, we're already getting into some heavy stuff here. Hi, Devin. St. Walpurgis Abbey, the cybernetics workshop. By the way, if there are any Kit Fox people here who are watching and you want me to... Walpurga? Walpurga. I was, I was going to say, if any of you would like to tell me the correct ways to say things, feel, feel like it. Is this Bloodborne? <laughs> is, is this a Bloodborne? Virgil, Sister Ada, welcome. Ooh. I'm Virgil, Chief Inquisitor at St. Walpurgis Abbey. We may be in need of your talents as an exorcist. Oh, that's me, baby. You can survey the evidence yourself. Plain D&D, but I'm lurking. Hey, well, thanks for stopping in. But I think you will agree. Has there truly been a murder? It seems so. A respected priestess, Mother Miriam, passed this morning under suspicious circumstances. Yeah, St. Wahlburgers. Yeah, and come on down to Wahlburgers. We got demons and murder. A demon may be present here, even now, possessing someone. Oh, so, okay, hold up. Oh, hey, Bianca. All right, so hold up. So it's this guy, right? <laughs> it's this, it's Virgil. This guy's the demon. Place your bets. We've seen two characters. Or are we the demon? There will probably be other things. I don't want to be annoying. But that's my called shot. This guy's the demon. What happened exactly? Mother Miriam was only recently appointed as, as successor to Abbot Gregory. This morning she came to the workshop to receive her coronet of office. The portraits are incredibly good. You're very, very right, Kev. Two chuckle bucks on Virgil being the demon. Let's do it. I want to be the demon. Nina, let's, let's be the demon. Something wrong with the installation? Yes, to put it mildly. The coronet oversurged, killing Mother Miriam. Brace yourself for the sight. The, which of the first two characters we meet are obviously the villain, yes. Hey, Rourke. Then the workshop operators, Gideon and Reuben. Oh, well, Reuben's named after a sandwich, and Gideon's dead in magic, so one of these might be it. They're brothers, right? Yes, but it's highly out of character for Reuben or Gideon to kill someone. Well, they were probably possessed... Even so, they were the only ones present when Mother Miriam died. Damons nurture our sinful desires into unthinkable actions, Virgil. One of the brothers has surely been seduced by a demon. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> you hold up. Hold up. Don't threaten me. Whichever it is, I will unmask his lies and cast out the demon within him. May Ein Sof's will be done. Amen. Oh, a demon could seduce me anytime. Yeah. How tall How tall is the demon? 6'5 with horns? We'll see. First, the suspect. We must identify which sinner is possessed by a demon. Second, the opportunity. When exactly was the murder committed? This seems like we're getting into game mechanics territory. Hi, cat. Uh, we can pinpoint the opportunity by analyzing each suspect's testimonies. Third, the means by which the murder has been committed. The means can be found among the physical evidence at the scene of incident. With horns, you're so funny. Please focus, Pat, please focus on the important part. How big are the horns? Do we have a Kit Fox representative that can tell us if the demons have horns? If they will have horns in the game? And if so, how tall the demons are with horns? You're making a sale here. This is important. Hi, Perrin. Game mechanics, you say? Seems fake. Fourth, the motive of the murderer, which can be found... <laughs> Kit Fox, please DM me. <laughs> oh, God. All right. 
All right. Uh, which can be found in their inner world, their sanctum. The motive will tell us which demon possesses the sinner. Okay, so we have to line up which demon. Very well, let's begin our holy work. Oh, this looks cool. All right, so what do we have here? We've got Miriam. Mother Miriam. Newly appointed voice of Ein Sof, which I'm guessing is a church or a god or something, who's scheduled to receive an aether coronet implant at the workshop. We just we just install the Jesus in you. <laughs> we just... You don't even have to worry about it. That Jesus? We'll get it done in a sec. Okay, so Virgil's who we were just talking to. I'm going to immediately assume that they won't let me just leave. Yeah, okay, they won't let me just leave. Boot up the Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Activating Jesus. Hi, Tien. Kid Fox would be like, hey, y'all, we're coming out with another extremely horny game and another game about demons and murder. Everyone's be like, yeah, the demons. <laughs> well, you know, as long as we're being good. All right, so let's talk. Reuben or Gideon? All right. Talk to <laughs> You wouldn't download a Jesus, would you? Gideon. Oh, we found evidence. Ooh, okay, Gideon. This is madness. I will not suffer this injustice. I am Gideon the Grand, the greatest cybernetician of our generation. I am blessed. I am so guides these hands, you see. All right, so it can't be this. This person was not murdered. <laughs> Jesus. I'm in. This person can't be the murderer because I already want him to be the bad guy. Right? You're wearing the silver, the gold cross? I got the gold cross on. Your gaudy trinkets are hardly worth boasting about. Mother Miriam died by your hands. Is that not so? No, why would I want to harm her? She was my patron. She loved me like a son. I did nothing wrong. The consecration chamber must have been compromised. Sister Ada here is, is here to seek the truth, Gideon. You have nothing to fear if you are innocent. I love the character designs too, yeah. Please hear Gideon's testimony, Sister Ada, and judge for yourself if he speaks true. Testimony of a suspect is divided into events. You can access detailed descriptions of events by hovering over them. Hopefully I can finish this within an hour. I normally play things quickly, but I, you know, we're, uh, we're having a little fun here. All right, let's listen to what Gideon has to say. Ooh, look at this. Oh, we've got some, we got some Phoenix Wright going on here. All right, let's play. Mother Miriam came to me for her consecration ceremony. Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and pause, auto-pause. I performed... This many times before, so I was confident. Okay. Objection! Witness testimony. Okay, yeah, this is neat. Okay. So, so, so Miriam's arrival, unverified. Corroboration, no. Specificity, no. Okay, so this is cool because we get to actually pick apart the individual things. And I think this is good because it kind of keeps you... Aware of where things are going. All right. Well, we'll I'll, I'll unauto pause it now that we've looked at that, and we'll take a stack. Then he's good to prepare for the ceremony. I ordered Reuben to take Mother Miriam to the consecration chamber. Okay. So in, in this sense, Reuben is over here. Hi, Raquel. Wait a second. Let's re-examine what he said about Miriam's arrival. Okay. So let's drag back to change time. Yeah, okay, I did I did do this. You want me to Where would you where would you like me to do it? All right, we'll see. I don't know if there's this is in beta, but I also don't know if I'm doing it wrong. I am a I'm reexamining it. I'm scrubbing it. There we go. Okay. Gideon does not mention Reuben being present while meeting Mother Miriam. Okay, so we don't know where Reuben is at this point. We just assume that he's here, and then the first that we hear of Reuben shows up right here. They, they're signposting. I would love to order a Reuben right now. Well, you might be ordering a murderer. Meanwhile, I adjusted the coronet's amplification at my work table and placed it upon Mother Miriam's head. Okay, so this whole time... That Reuben and Miriam are away. You have this. You're doing stuff over here. I wish there was the ability to, to speed up a bit. I mean, I can probably just scrub it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then you bring it all the way over here, and you see she's alive and well. You step into the glass, the Jesus dome. 
Line of sight mechanic here is sick, and I can't wait for it to pay off. Yeah, that seems really cool, even if it's not in this demo. Okay, so we load it up. We're good to go. And now, we begin by closing our eyes and praying together in Einsof. To Einsof. Thought I heard the chamber open, but I didn't think much of it. So I... Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, Eli. So my eyes closed because I'm praying... We hear the chamber open. And then I open my eyes. I activated the consecration chamber and began the ceremony itself. The ether output was within safe ranges. Okay. <coughs> so my eyes open. She's still alive. No. Oh, <laughs> I have to summon Dracula. Oh, good lord. Oops. Well, murder happened. Are we sure it's still her? I think we are, because I think it's supposed to be like wearing a hat. Oh, boy. All right. So, so okay, so she got overloaded with Jesus. Calling for a body swap? I see. So, so, so then it happened. She was killed, but it's impossible. I had everything under control. Okay. She'll be fine. She's good. She's totally okay. Also, are y'all hearing my game sound? I had it turned at about halfway, but I think Tosa's just telling me that they cannot hear it. I've now turned it up at least double, so you can hopefully hear it over me. Now yes? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Alright, sorry. There was a thing going on. There was, it was fine. Alright, so let's see. So now let's talk to Ruben. Bray needed more RAM. Yeah. Hey, Framped. Alright, so now we got Ruben. Aw, this is, this is the sweet looking brother. An exorcist? Surely there are no demons here. This was an accident, wasn't it? If Gideon is possessed, that would mean he did it on purpose. Horrible. You're the elder brother. I see your name. Yes, my name is Ruben Garamond. I'm responsible for engineering and design of our implants. How did Mother Miriam die? It was a completely preventable accident. Mother Miriam died because Gideon deliberately flouted the ceremonial guidelines for his own glory. Yes, I'm here. I'm trying to find you on your channel. Nope. Yeah, sorry. I, I tried to toss the Indicate link uh, in a few places, but hello. We've already started. This this game has like, it's like Phoenix Wright, but with really, really, well, I like the art in that game too, but it's more religious and technology. Yeah, oh, the word flout, flouted vocabulary comes back. Flouted the ceremonial guidelines for his own glory. Gideon may be by flesh and blood, but he must take responsibility for his negligence. All right, so Reuben immediately being like, Gideon is, is the bad guy. Let's listen to what Reuben has to say. Okay, so again, we, we have the timelines uh, placed here. So let's listen to Reuben. Mother Miriam came to us to receive a consecration testimony, but she wanted something extravagant. Well, it doesn't have a Maya Fey yet, Rourke. This is a demo. Gideon suggested setting the coronet to have maximum aether output. I warned him that doing so is highly dangerous. He was like, we want to put the maximum amount of Jesus in your head, but you shouldn't want to do that. And he was like, no, 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 that's okay. Gideon convinced her to move forward to the ceremony anyway. Since he was going to handle everything, I went back to my tasks. Okay, so in this version of events, this part of the testimony is rather long and repetitive. So in this version of events, Reuben does not lead her to the chamber or do anything, which is exactly opposite. <coughs> so a whole lot of this happens. You see, you see him press the button. You see him go. You see him begin praying. So we see the prayer happen, and now we are here. Good. I was growing impatient. Okay. When Gideon activated the consecration chamber, I immediately felt something was wrong. I begged Gideon to stop, but he didn't listen. Watch out, there's going to be another head explosion. So we're just going to see this a lot. And then the unthinkable happened. Mother Miriam was killed. This is no accident. It's all Gideon's fault. Yeah, that the head explosion is a little jarring, but it is a murder, so it is what it is. All right, so let's leave. Okay, so, so we've heard two people's 
testimonies. There's only one truth to the chain of events, and I doubt that either brother has told it to us. Music's a little loud. Okay, let me let me turn it down. I went about halfway back. So we must rely on Einstein's greatest gift to us, our minds. There are three ways we should consider what we've discovered. First, the introduction, since there can only be one truth, if two things don't align, one or both of them is false. If Gideon and Reuben do not agree on something, someone is lying. Or, if what they say do not match the evidence I find, then they must be lying. Second is induction. I should base my theory based on what I discover. If my theory does not align with any of the testimonies or evidence that I find, then I should discard it. If two theories are possible, I should prefer the one that has more information that supports it. That said, induction alone is usually not enough. Finally, abduction. I must hypothesize what could have happened, filling in gaps in my imagination. I see. Well, well, then hopefully this this middle middle point, Kev, will be good uh, noise wise. This is the fastest and most powerful way of thinking, but also the most fraught. The fastest and most powerful way of thinking. Okay, cool. So let's actually go do the rest of our the rest of our look in here. Let's examine your workstation, coordinate blueprints, and spear blueprints. A valuable piece of physical evidence. You can access detailed information. All right, so let's go. Let's go collect stuff. Oh, it's going to tell us to do this now. Okay, coordinate blueprints. Plans for constructing the Aether coordinate. The purpose of the device seems to be to amplify the user's Aether output. The components are amplifier, casing, and limiter. I feel like Gideon wouldn't arrange murder so obviously implicates him even for manslaughter. Assuming tech Catholicism's legal system is roughly analogous to our own. Yeah. Um, spear blueprints found on Ruben's workstation. Plans for restoring a relic that was recently brought to St. Wal Wahlburgers by Father Augustine. I'm so sorry, Kit Fox, but Zeke said Wahlburgers, and now I have to say Wahlburgers. All right. Let's look at your workstation. Consecration ceremony. One, place the coronet and the recipient in the chamber. Did do that. The performer and the recipient pray in silence. That happened. Begin the song to start modulating the aether. Intensify the aether output by bringing the performance to a crescendo. Okay, so all of those things happened as far as we can tell. We found the coronet limiter. Found in Gideon's workspace in pristine condition. Component is required to safely install the coronet without causing an aether oversurge. Okay, so the fact that we found this here says uh, you need the limiter. So the fact that it's here is suspicious, right? Because it's supposed to be it's it's supposed to be installed. So the limiter was not installed. Did he murder by party rocking? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Didn't even apologize for party rocking. Yeah, Zeke, I think you're right. It means it was not in the helmet. All right, control panel. Used to activate the control and control the consecration chamber. Usage records show that the aether output during the ceremony was well beyond safe ranges. Sorry for party rocking so hard that you died. Okay, so the control panel says it's within safe ranges. And I think the extra layer here, right, is, is because there's demonic possession. It's possible that a person's own version of events, like, they can't trust it. All right. All right, time to go look at the body. Mother Miriam's body. The body is completely unharmed, but her head has exploded into a mess of blood and bone fragments. Oh, sorry. And the coronet remains. Sorry, my... Yeah, they took it to 11. Uh, found near Mother Miriam's body, parts of the amplifier component and bits of casing have survived the explosion. Yeah, so, so, I mean, here, they just say we have amplifier, casing, and limiter. We know there there's pieces of the other two, and the other is in pristine condition, right? So that's obviously that's obviously not good. Um, okay, so then let's do... Um, okay, so how do I... So do I talk to you to start presenting stuff? So I want to go to perform... And I guess I would like to... Gideon claims... Oh, it's, it's literally here. That the Aether output values are within safe ranges, but the control panel indicates otherwise. Oh, the highlighted egg France. Not dead, just defeated. It's okay. Let's present the control panel and unmask his lie. Yeah, so we contradict. We go here. We control panel and present. Lies unmasked. Oh, dang. Okay. Okay. That was... <laughs> you lied, Gideon. The ceremony wasn't safe. 
The control panel's records show that the Aether output values were at abnormally high ranges. Dun dun dun! Take that! Of course it was. Mother Miriam wanted the coronet as powerful as it could be. But I am Gideon the Grand. With my talents, I had it under control. I made no errors. Something else went wrong. I just don't know what. All right. Amended his testimony. Let's main let's examine maintain control. Okay. So now we have new. Okay. I apologize, by the way, for for Kit Fox folks, if it's annoying that I'm like. It's like Phoenix Wright, the game, because <laughs> I know I know this is this is its own thing, but. I think it's it's helpful for me to compare the two. So so okay, so we do get new I mean just in general I think this layout is uh very cool. Um I feel like compared to a lot of games of this type I suppose, the there are not many having just a a really easy way to go back and see everything that's being shown here is very useful. Yeah, I love the layout too, yeah. Specificity is a shorter time frame it describes a clearer set of events. Physicality testimony is now consistent with the records uh, from the control panel. I can assume that any verified statement like this is true. What's more, the contradiction weakened the suspect's resolve. His eye of providence glows. Oh, dang, we got an eye here. Oh, uh, which allows me to enter his sanctum, the digital representation of his mind. Oh, let's go into the mind palace. What are the icons on the tray? These are our evidence, uh, Eli. So we get to... So this is like... So these blueprints say amplifier, casing, and limiter, and I see, well, the limiter is fine, and the amplifier and casing have been exploded. Jack in. Yeah, Mega Man Battle Network. Hop into your mind. I'm going I'm to freak Gideon's bean. Okay, let's use his third eye to enter his sanctum and see what truly motivates this suspect. Okay, so so on top of having better stuff, hey, Shinkari. All right, so let's, let's enter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak this boy's bean. Evidence discovered. Narcissist. Yeah, I, I think I think that's fair. We only cracked the outer layer of his sanctum this time. Okay, so this is it. So, so the more we do contradictions... Yeah, the more we do contradictions, we pop open their bean palace and we learn more things about them. Okay. I can for sure think of one person who would be here. It's like Phoenix, right? But with church intrigue and demons and be sold. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't always love the, like, it's like X, but Y. But I think it's a good... Uh, I think for games that are a little harder to grok, I think it makes sense. All right. Still, let's examine the, phys oh, the psychological evidence that we found. Okay. Oh, and then here we got brain evidence. Okay. So this is our last tray. So so brain evidence found craves attention and sincerely believes he is the best cybernetician in the world. So at least this is what he believes about himself. Yeah, Ian, is, is it your wife? <laughs> yeah bean evidence all right uh excellent some of the yeah so i, I like this too unverified verified etc some of the statements are now supported by the suspect psychology next i must find correlations between the suspect's behavior and existing demons oh let's open the demon book oh wow is it lucifer the lucifer within us bum 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 okay let's open my my demon my demonic pokedex Oh wait, hold on. Can I call it? It's it's the Pokenomicon. That's it. All of you know when we play this game on stream, this is the canon name. It's the Pokemonicon. Kit Fox, you you can have that one for free. And well, and maybe not for free. Maybe you'll get sued for it. <laughs> but all right, the Pokemonicon. Lucifer the Proud, the Prince of Demons, and the eternal adversary of Ayn Sof manifests in the ambitious and strong-willed promising them their heart's desire in exchange for their soul. Okay, so this is... That's the... Oh, ooh, hello. Big big boys, big toys. Beelzebub, the gluttonous, simple-minded daemon that debilitates the host, turning them into feral beasts. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Devin, it's Bloodborne. Uh-oh, whoopsies. Turn him, done turned them into beasts. The host is compelled to consume stranger and filthier things until nothing remains of their humanity. Uh-oh. Seven daemons. Yeah. Sathanus, the vengeful, the, a furious daemon. <laughs> a furious daemon that strokes the simmering rage. Oh, hi, Svonner. Sorry, I think I saw you earlier, but I, I, I apologize for not saying anything. Uh, praise upon the fervent and the righteous, goading them to take matters into their own hands. 
Lotan, the envious, playful, but deceitful demon. Oh, I love this Eldrazi design. This is good as hell. Um, I want I want to see the I want to see the full art of these hot boys. Oh, we only, we can only choose from these four. Uh, probably because they didn't want to bog us down in a million of them. Yeah, okay. So they drive the host mad with whispers of their own inadequacy. The host blames others for their ill fortune until the apparent injustice drives them to take what is rightfully theirs. So I think, um... Not like Lotan's fingers. Oops, oops, we did an Eldritch. So, uh, it is very possible that it's just Lucifer. But I also think it's worth it to consider that if we're doing, if it is Gideon that's the bad guy, it could be the envious, right? Because if, if this is someone who believes themselves to be the greatest, then maybe whispers of inadequacy just decide like, oh, I gotta prove myself, I gotta jack it up to 100, I gotta explode them with the Jesus over. Lotan's probably the one who's denying that he's failed, yeah. And then, um, I don't think it's Sithanis, but but this could be, I mean, you never know. This, this could be, this could be the other the other guy if it's Reuben. Those who possessed, there should be a psychological evidence that a clear connection, correlation with the demon. Yeah, so the demon part is kind of the extra twist added on here, right? Then further psychological evidence, I must find more contradictions to present them to the suspect. Now that I've heard the testimony and gathered evidence, I can accuse them. To accuse the suspect, I must establish the opportunity, means, and motive of the crime. I can try as many times as I wish, but there's only one true answer for each section. Let's try to establish the opportunity. So, when could I have m murdered Miriam? You could have done it here, when the ceremony starts, right? Well, the answer is would be forced to admit that they could have committed the murder at that time. Otherwise, look at a counter-argument to why that's impossible. Perform the ceremony yourself. You get ample opportunity to, to hurt her. Okay, okay, so that worked. Nothing that could have harmed her means. I need to present physical evidence. By what means are you claiming that I murdered her? We would, I guess, do the coronet. Right, this means only that it exploded, not that I caused it to happen. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll come back to it. The motive, psychological, so let's let's present your your narcissism brain. Your self-absorbed man, everything you do feeds into your own pride. To you, Mother Miriam was a mere prop for your masterpiece. Hi, Gray. You too can explore the demonic Pokedex in the full version. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Professor Oak sending ten year olds out into the out into the world. You carelessly caused her death in pursuit of artistic glory. How dare you? I took the utmost care in everything I did for Mother Miriam. Yeah, I, I think I would. I should probably present the actual limiter. That her forever remain imperfect. I would never risk anything that would harm my work or Mother Miriam. I love Mother Miriam. Why would I hurt her? Okay, so the motive didn't work. Cancel for now and leave the suspect. Which, which I mean, that tracks, right? That's like... If my if the person dies and that looks bad on me, right, and that's not good. We we can probably get the other thing a little better. So let's look at Gideon crafts the casing, ornaments of implants, uh, less popular than Gideon due to his dour, cynical demeanor and the focus of the engineering of the implants. Okay, so let's let's check out Ruby. All right, so let's see. Do we have something that contradicts Ruby? So, this is verified, this is verified. Return to work. Ruben claims he went back to his workstation. Gideon says uh, he opened the door. So we can, we can contradict you with this. Present. Lies unmasked, a new sanctum chamber is unlocked. I will say, if you're taking feedback to, to whomever, um, I don't know if people are taking feedback. I don't know if, if e is an Indicate person or a Kid Fox person. I kind of wish that that thing lingered a little bit. Just that that screen. Just a bit more. Because it went by real fast the first time. And I kind of want to, you know, I kind of want to have my <gasps> moment a little bit. But I do like it. I'll take the feedback. Ah, oh, yes, Norcho. Norcho, can you run this feedback over to them along with a, with a Venti? Is that what they say? 
Ruben Garamond, you did not return to your workstation after the discussion. Gideon ordered you to open the consecration chamber for Mother Miriam. Ordered me? Is that what he told you? Despite his delusions, Gideon is certainly not my master. They're kind of, they all have the same voice. They're brothers. I did open the chamber, it's true. I apologize for the omission. It's a regular part of our routine that it slipped my mind earlier. Yeah, a likely story. Slip in my mind. All right, let's enter your mind, your bean palace. Let's examine open chamber, okay. Good, the statement is now verified for two reasons. I see, so, so we want things to become yellow. Corroboration, Gideon's testimony confirms that it happened, and then two, it has a shorter time frame and describes a clear set of events. Sandwich boy is guilty? Yeah, probably. All right, go into your bean, bean palace. What do we got in here? What lies within the bean? Evidence discovered believer. When he saw Mother Miriam's face, he became a believer. Believer found faithful servant of Ein Sof, or so he thinks he knows that cybernetics are a critical part of the one truth. Cybernetics empower us in the eyes of the one true God, Ein Sof. I am honored to be of service. Okay, so so he thinks that he's doing a good job, right? But he's he's very we know that he's very motivated by religion. A bean lever. Alright, says so he was going to handle everything. I went back to my tasks. Hmm. You open the chamber. All right, so, so we say this. I thought I heard the chamber opening. I saw Gideon pray before he did that right at least. Okay, so we can, oh, we can ask people about the other parts of it. That's cool. He approached the control panel at that time. He did do it. Gideon still thinks he has things under control. He's delusional. Okay, so we have this extra thing. Should I leave this? I kind of want to go figure out... Okay, I've gone through the fundamental steps that have yet to have uncovered by this incident. I should continue to find more information, contradict the suspects, and accuse the suspect. There are no consequences for a failed accusation. Each failure will bring me closer to the truth of the incident. Yeah, so they're just like, don't worry about it. Let's go talk to Gideon again, because we, we haven't figured out maintain control. Aether output's dangerously high, but I had the chamber under control. Um, hmm. Can I contradict you with the limiter? I have no idea what you mean or what that has to do with me. Yeah, okay. So we have the timing of the chamber opening doesn't add up? Okay, so we're saying... You order Ruben to do it, and you open the chamber. So let's ask you, did Ruben return to work? I have no idea, that's not important. Okay. We can ask you about things. I vaguely recall him coming up to me, I didn't hear him, I was too busy performing the ceremony. I saw Ruben lead Mother Miriam, though I didn't see him open the door. However, Miriam was inside when I brought the coordinates, so Ruben must have opened it after all. I don't really recall what he said or did it this time. Hmm, okay. So what's the next step that kind of unravels this whole thing? We have access to some of these things. What is the spear blueprint? Oh no, now I'm worried that we might not finish it in time. Uh, let's see. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So I guess I can look at these things. You ask why he didn't use the limiter. Yeah, I kind of wonder if I should. Yeah, so we're talking about adjusting coronet. And then we contradict it with the blueprints. Or we contradict it with the limiter. Yeah, I don't know how to use it, but that's what we want to do. He didn't say he heard the door open and praying. Could you ask Ruben about that? Uh, I did ask Ruben about that, Zace, and he just said something like, yeah. Oh, maintain control. But I had the chamber under control. Contradict with control panel. Yeah, that doesn't seem to work. Do we contradict this with the limiter, maybe? Hmm. Okay. 
so let's see. I, I think I think I want to look at the red stuff, right? This is kind of a difficult thing because neither of these people have a have have we can't verify what they were doing during this time, right? They were here with each other, basically. Miriam's arrival was unverified. Maybe I talked to Ruben about it. Gideon didn't mention me being there. Typical. Oh, whoa, whoa. I need to remember. I need to remember that I can do this. That I can I can present someone else's thing, right? So if we talk to Gideon. We go to Miriam's arrival. And we contradict it with Miriam's arrival. Okay, well that still didn't work. Does the other guy have testimony? Uh, I don't think he does. I see that there's an extra slot, but maybe he do. Imagine if Ruben claims it's Gideon's fault. Are either of them telling the truth? Perhaps there's another possibility. Oh, I need to remember I can zoom out. Oh, there's a door button. Okay. Door controls. Used to open and close the chamber. Only operable from outside the chamber. Usage records show that it was opened twice this morning. Okay. So, I mean, that's probably important. Okay, so... so This is when it would have been opened. <sighs> Wait a minute. Does that... What does that mean, right? Because it's also open right now. Which, can we drag this thing over? It seems like I can't see everything over here. And I'm not sure what the what the issue with it is. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I feel like the door controls is useful. Would that mean he didn't hear the door open and was lying? Yeah, okay. Ruben said he had to open it for something else, didn't he? So let's see. Prayer. Contradict with door controls? Let's see. No, that doesn't seem to get us anywhere. This is definitely one of those things that once we get the right thread, it's going to completely unravel. All right, let's try with you. This is just setting Gideon to your warning. Gideon believes that his so-called genius makes him impervious to danger. An ordinary man might fail, but not Gideon the Grand. Okay, so we can ask him about his own stuff. That's something I didn't do. Greeted them together, that's right. Patron, so assistant on being present. Opening the chamber. So the door was closed. Why did you not close it after Mother Miriam entered? Because I knew Gideon was bringing the coronet soon. Yeah, that, that's what I'm figuring out right now, Rourke. So, so you just opened the chamber at that point. Gideon thought he heard something during his prayer. That doesn't mean anything. He could have imagined it. Okay. So we have returned to work. What were you working on? I was restoring a ceremonial spear for tonight's mass. It's a magnificent relic. I think Abbot Gregory would be pleased with the result. Um, I don't think this will matter, but I'll just show you the things. I do not follow your logic. Okay. Ask. Unfortunately, was occupied and not see what Gideon did. Yeah, so this is important that they both didn't see things. I guess if I do accuse you... So when is an opportunity that you could have done the murder? Just to say. I was in the chamber then. Gideon or Mother Miriam would have seen me. What about when they were praying? I was still working at that time. Do I have proof that he wasn't? If I do, I should contradict him with it first before accusing him. During the ceremony, no one was inside the chamber other than Mother Miriam. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I'm getting a little lost in the weeds of the literal, like, what buttons I have to press to get the things I want. We don't know that he was that he was actually back to work. Try to stop the ceremony. The means. Gideon was on the operating device. How could I have affected the chamber of Mother Miriam? 
was flawless. It was as Gideon's performance of the ceremony, but you removed the limiter of the coronet without Gideon's knowledge, which coupled with coronet's high amplification caused an oversurge. Gideon's arrogance might have endangered Mother Miriam, but you ensured that she would die from it. Okay. And the motive, why would I want to harm her? Your faith, why would you sink those? I think my faith is proof I would never harm a priestess. Maybe I should also... Maybe I should also go accuse Gideon of this. Door button was a contradiction? Is it? Okay. Let's see. I feel like I want to accuse you with the limiter. You removed the limiter. That's nonsense. Do you really think I would forget to replace the crown jewel of my masterpiece? By what means are you claiming that I killed her? Um... Okay. The coronet blueprints belong to Reuben? Huh. Also, Miriam had a demon in here, and that's why the overload killed her? It's possible. Gideon mentioned the discussion right after arrival. I don't think Gideon did. Sorry, there's a lot of things in the air, and I'm wondering how to actually bring them to bear here, which is a little difficult. But it looks like Gideon's blueprints... These are Gideon's blueprints, right? Hmm. Do I contradict you with these? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Gideon says the door opened while he was praying, and the door button says it was open twice, but Reuben says he didn't open the door. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I would... how I would contradict them with the door controls. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Okay. He's going, I went back to my task. You test my patience. Has your memory slipped once more? The door records show that the consecration op chamber was opened twice today. Given that Gideon was praying during this time, only you could have opened the chamber. It's true that I opened the chamber again just before the ceremony started. Okay, so so it doesn't... So I was getting confused because I thought that the second opening accounted for it being open right now. But I guess it doesn't. I had my reasons. Some of the chamber seemed unseemly. Given what happened to Mother Miriam, I feel vindicated in my fears. Tell me what you did in the chamber. Okay, so let's go in your bean. Now I have a second... We got a second bean layer. Envy. Okay. Yeah, it, it was a little bit unclear, but it, we still got there. Envy. Why does Gideon get all the credit for all of Reuben's hard work? If only Gideon could be exposed for the fraud that he is. Any envious of Gideon? Unlikely. His artistry would be nothing without my designs. He doesn't know the first thing about how our implants actually work. All his work is trite, superficial. Why anyone gives him attention is beyond me. Envy is very demony. You're very right. I guess if I were to accuse, your motive is envy. Humiliation of Gideon. You envy your brother's success. You want his fame and his glory. All right. So we have two of those. J'accuse. All right, says Gideon, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. All right. Especially according to the fucking Omicron, yeah. Bean feels lines up with demons, yeah. So I opened the consecration chamber to verify that the coronet was in working order. Okay, so this definitely happened, as we thought. Everything seemed fine, so I returned to my desk again. Oh, well, this is where we catch him in the lie, baby. Everything seems fine, but we know that the limiter wasn't on her. I don't know how to do that. Do I contradict it with the blueprints? How do I do that? We know, we know, though. We know that everything was not in working order. I don't know how to make that happen, but we know it. All right. So let's see. Let's have you, let's ask you about the new stuff we know. Did Ruben return to work? Yeah. Maybe accused with check chambers, the opportunity. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Zace is right. Well, let me still ask these things anyways. Come in the chamber while I was praying. That seems paranoid even for him. Return to work. I have no idea. That's not important here, anyhow. Okay. 
Try the broken one too. I see. Okay, so so I'll do Cat's thing and then I'll do Zeus's thing. I think that makes sense. So so everything seemed fine, and we contradicted this with the broken coronet. Yeah, yeah. So that doesn't work. But then we're saying when we accuse you, what was your opportunity? Your opportunity to do the murder was when you checked the chamber. During the prayer, you claimed to have opened the chamber to check the material. That was when you sabotaged the ceremony. Okay. So let's accuse you. Oh, well, okay. We, we did it. <laughs> All right. So it was a little abrupt. But the... So so what I have here um, written uh, in this demo thing is that uh, because of spoilers... Well... I will say we don't actually know. Wow, what a smart, handsome streamer. Thank you. So I, I will quote them here, and I will say uh, that the game will end before you can exercise a demon because spoilers. So it is possible when we actually, uh, when this game comes out, uh, that this does not mean that he's literally the bad guy. It could mean that this gets us deeper into the bean. You know, maybe maybe the demon possessed him, but then something still bad happened. Yeah, now to post that to speedruns.com. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to get a PB on the on the Lucifer Within Us demo. Yeah, it might just trigger a part two to the investigation. There's also something I believe oh, to be deeper in the bean. Nah, fam, he bad. Okay, well, he's probably bad. But, you know, it is what it is. The other thing I was going to say is uh, uh, exercising the demon is also a part of the gameplay, apparently. Uh, so, we'll, I, think, I think they don't want to show quite quite just yet what that is going to be like um what did y'all think about it yeah everybody go go wishlist it I'll, i'm gonna do some announcements and stuff for them in a bit but uh i really enjoyed it how do i do it how do i wishlist i'm on the steam page if i can figure this out surely y'all can figure this out add to my wishlist bam nailed it damon bean a beanman yeah it definitely seems like it has some legs and I think, in the end, that's all I can ask for, right? Um, I will say, in terms of criticism that I have, which, you know, I like to present my criticisms, I felt like there was a lot of... What do you say? Finickiness? Yeah, okay, I've wishlisted it now. Just in terms of, you know... And I think kind of all investigation games are like this. Um, I want Wild Blue to do work for Kit Fox, but they already have their art unlock. They do have their art unlock, but if y'all need something, Wild Blue. Yeah, um, but I will say, right, like, it's important to note that, like, we had a moment. Oh, let me, let me lose this Kit Fox logo so y'all can keep that one, right? We had a moment where, where we were like, okay, we've, we've kind of pieced it together in our head, and then it felt a little finicky to be like, how do we get the game to recognize the thing that we said? You know, and I think that's uh, th that's what happened. Mr. I liked that there weren't consequences for poking around because Ace Attorney has that problem of punching you when, th when things are unintuitive. Oh yeah, absolutely, right? Like, uh, hard to read the last bits of the timeline pop up. Yeah, that's something for sure, right? Like, uh, it, it, like if I was supposed to scroll, I felt like I couldn't necessarily. Um, but yeah, I think Mr. or Raniel uh, has a great point, right? Like, um, the fact that we could just poke around right it, it's like on one hand uh, I wish it were a little more simple for us to figure out like how do we present the thing I also think for me and this is more this is more on the uh, on the UI side of things the colors of present accuse contradict um, ask all being kind of the same as a lot of the background made it difficult for me to know when I was in when I was listening to something on the timeline it was difficult for me to be like reminded that like oh I can ask something here or like this is happening right and I kind of wish that those things those elements looked a little different um so as to kind of draw the eyes to be like here are all of your options in this moment because I felt like um if I were playing this on my own I could definitely figure out how to solve it but it actually helped a lot having all of you in chat here which of course I appreciate you being here anyways please don't go anywhere because because we have announcements and stuff but um uh, I feel like if I didn't have chat here with me, it would have taken me just longer to figure out the button sequence, but not necessarily so much longer to figure out the game, right? But I mean, a demo is a demo, right? Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna roast these people for it, but I think it it is a good sign that all of us are excited about the premise of this game. 
And when seeing the actual gameplay of it, we were still excited about it. <laughs> and that any of the things that I didn't like were all related to still important, but details that I think are easier to iron out, right? It doesn't feel like there's uh, there's a big issue with this game. And maybe this is annoying for people to hear. I don't know. Indicate, please invite me back. Uh, but I think it's definitely like... Uh, I don't know. I wasn't going to roast this game if, if I didn't think it was good, but I certainly wasn't going to be like, wow, thank you for inviting me to this game that was super great, and then like not say anything about it if I thought it wasn't very good, you know? Like, I, I had faith that it was going to be good. <laughs> Let me put it that way. And I am pleasantly surprised that I didn't have to sugarcoat anything. Like, this is, this is definitely a very sweet idea uh, that I haven't seen enough people run with. I think the timeline, the UI, everyone was like, yeah, that's really exciting and great. So, yeah, please, everybody, go wishlist it. Um, well, this is... Listen, if, if Kit Fox was not on your list of your favorite developers, upcoming or current, uh, they certainly should be now, um, <laughs> is, is what I got to say. Uh, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like they are working on Dwarf Fortress, uh, upcoming releases, this, uh, Lucifer Within Us, Boyfriend Dungeon, Mondo Museum, and then, of course, uh, Shrouded Isle, Moon Hunters. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Shattered Planet, Fit for a King, and Six Ages uh, are the games that are out right now. I've wished upon a list. Yeah, so um, I guess moving ahead to the next bit, uh, just so that we wrap this up in the end, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some just some of the stuff that they were like, hey, mention this, but I also want you to mention it because or, or want to mention it because it's important. Um, so Indicade, if those of you don't know, um, I got into I've been going to Indicade since like 2014, 2013, because um, it's been a physical space, usually in LA. I hope I'm not being ignorant, and maybe it's in many, many more places. Uh, but uh, it's always been a fantastic time, just walking around the grounds and seeing uh, everything from like dope, uh, like games that we would end up going on to to play on stream and like buy and and enjoy to like really sweet ideas uh for like vr stuff and student stuff like it it feels like what i wish more like events game events were right it feels like you get to meet what developers are like you, you like you get to actually see people who are on the ground constantly making prototypes whether it's card games vr games i, I cannot say enough good things about indicade uh, and the the community and everything that they facilitate and the way that they've helped many of my friends get their games shown off. Um, I'm just a huge fan of them in general. But obviously we live in a hell world and the pandemic exists. So uh, these are things that Indicate has uh, coming up. Oh, yeah. And if, if <laughs> I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are here from my community. But if you uh, if you didn't know who I was before this and you want to drop me a follow, I would appreciate it. We'd love to have you anytime. Um, so Indicate this summer, all summer long, most Wednesdays and Thursdays, starting at about this time. So I came on at noon. Uh, they'll be starting at 11 Pacific to about uh, 2 Eastern will be around their start time. They're going to be streaming games. Uh, and these games are selected from their E3 showcase, new submissions, Indicate alumni, panels, tournaments, all sorts of fun stuff. So, so you know, fingers crossed, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I get to come back and you'll see me here. But even if you don't see me here, I really hope that you follow and I really hope you have your notifications on because you might be doing something at home working from home and then you see the indicate beacon go live and you say to yourself wow i really want to go see what new thing is happening because um you know this is something where even if i were not streaming this i would have wanted to have heard about it and now that i have heard about it i want to at least check in and see what games are being showcased because i mean y'all know the struggle of how truly difficult it is to even get an understanding of new games, right? You you read something on a Steam wish list. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Better to hear it from the devs and people who are playing it first. Uh, the other thing, and this is what you're seeing on the screen, is, is uh, on the screen, on the stream, is Indicate's flagship fall festival. It's called Anywhere and Everywhere. Uh, it's going to be up for these nine days, October 16th through the 24th, and it is going to be, drum roll for the EU folks, 24-hour programming for an online festival celebrating independent games. You do not have to do like you probably, some of you did today, and I'm very happy for you, uh, or, or, or very appreciative of you for like waking up and coming out to support the stream uh, and be here. This is a 24 hour jam that is gonna be going on the whole way uh, that is gonna be celebrating indie indie games kind of all around. So <laughs> drums, drums in the deep, yes, absolutely. Uh, and then of course, uh, please wish wishlist, uh, 
Lucifer within us uh, on on their page. Uh, so I think that's something that like mostly everyone has done. But don't don't be like me. Don't let your uh, <laughs> don't let your executive dysfunction get in the way. You absolutely want to wish list this stuff if it is even slightly as cool as what has been displayed here. I think this is going to be a game that's worth your time as well. Please go check out Kit Fox games. I actually got to play uh, boyfriend dungeon at PAX. I think it was a year or two ago. Uh, they were super fun to talk to. I get to hang out with some of their developers. I get to hang out with their community manager. Um, I was just blown away. It was the game that most of y'all were excited to have me go look at. Uh, and uh, I, I loved meeting them. I loved talking to them. Uh, and hearing that uh, they were doing this game and now playing it, uh, I really honestly couldn't be more excited. I promise that's true feelings. I'm not a <laughs> I'm I'm not a BSer at least not in that sense. So uh, yeah, big love to Indicade and Kitfox for letting me do this, and also just for putting all this stuff on. So please go follow them on these socials. Um, I don't have Instagram, so I can't recommend it. Uh, but if you do have it, you should probably do it. Instagram seems important for people to have, but their Twitter and their Twitch, of course, uh, and remember to actually have those notifications on uh, because every Wednesday and Sunday, or most Wednesdays and Sundays, you're probably going to see something very cool, and if you see it before I wake up, if I'm having a bad sleep gremlin day, I want y'all to tell me stuff that you saw. Please, this is so many times, y'all will DM me and be like, oh, here's a cool game that's coming up on stream. This is something that you might want to look at. Well, now here's a way for you to get it like, as directly, intravenously as possible. So please, 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 please do that. Um, and uh, and probably coming around October, we'll see if we can't co-stream or, or talk about or maybe make a Discord channel to talk about the things that are going on here because I think there will be some really awesome things that we will all probably want to see. But yeah, so... Um, uh, yeah, I'm Scarzard. Again, if you don't know me, follow me. Um, or don't. Do what you want to do. Follow my dog, actually. Um, but yeah, I think I am going to stream in just a little bit. Probably just a very, very, very short one because uh, I did not get a whole ton of sleep. So uh, any of my regulars, if you wanted to know that I was going to be on today, I will probably be on shortly, but only for a little while. We'll be doing some Yakuza. It's very different from this, um, <laughs> but no doubt just as dramatic. All right, that's, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Uh, I appreciate all of you so, so, so much. And I appreciate the uh, folks for putting this thing on.